Welcome to Winning at Work, the podcast for foodies, founders, and food and beverage professionals. You know, if you wanted to discover a new brand, a new food or beverage to try, there are literally thousands of companies out there. It is very difficult to do that. That's why we curate the different, the better, and the special brands here each and every week so you don't have to do the heavy lifting. If you're a founder and you're looking to connect with other like-minded executives, we make that very easy. And if you just work in the food and beverage industry and you're looking for fresh inspiration, we have that here in spades. This episode is sponsored by Temple. Congratulations, you're selling in retail. But the competition is fierce and your brand is surrounded by similar products. How will consumers find you? Let Temple show you an innovative retail sales solution. Click on the Attract Consumers link below. Need to attract great employees? Click on the Hire Now below and we'll show you how to use your culture to help you stand out. Stay tuned for this week's episode. You know, we're in the summer and that means everyone's going to the beach. And no doubt when you're at the beach, you're going to see a bunch of crap floating around, whether it be plastic or some other kind of trash. And you're going to think, Man, how in the world are we going to get this mess cleaned up? Why are we having such a huge problem? It is a huge problem. And it's not just in oceans. I mean, it's in rivers, it's streams, it's lakes. There is plastic everywhere. Who is out there trying to fix this problem? How do we fix this problem? Well, Aaron Kleinert, he's the co-founder and COO of Strawfish. They've got an idea. They are upcycling marine pollution into disposable food service solutions. You heard that right. Someone is actually taking that crap, pardon my French, and turning it into disposable straws and cutlery and who knows what else is in the innovation pipeline. Aaron, welcome in, my man. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. The pleasure is ours to be learning about how in the world we're going to solve this massive problem with plastic in the oceans. How did you guys even figure this out in the first place? It's uh, It's been a journey. And as you mentioned, uh, the plastic problem is uh, is quite large, quite vast. You have you know, statistics where the Pacific garbage patch is two times the size of Texas just floating in the middle of our ocean you know, our coastlines are being you know, ravaged by single-use plastics and trash. Our landfills are piling up. Um, we, we founded this company here in South Florida about four and a half years ago when we, when we saw the impact ourselves and were in a, in a position to start our journey to, to make an impact towards that greater mission. I'm just, try, I'm just trying to imagine a floating heap of who knows what, twice the size of Texas. I don't think people understand just what you said. It's it's massive. I, I'm, I'm here in Florida. Texas probably swallows Florida a couple times over itself. So to be twice as large as Texas, just you know, impacting wildlife and you know, being out there and, and just part of our ocean, the, the impact and the, the problem that's out there is so much larger than we we could really even identify or, or understand conceptualize to date. Yeah, I, honestly, that is too big. I mean, it's really, really hard to wrap your head around that. Just you can't just go out there and clean that up. You can't just go grab it. It's just too much of it. First of all, I think it's a it's a huge need that you're solving. I know we all kind of feel guilty a little bit uh, going to take out and well, almost any product you get, honestly, is kind of wrapped in all this unnecessary plastic. And, you know, I'm I'm always telling people if I'm getting takeout, I don't need the utensils. I don't need any of that stuff. Just try to leave it. You know, I don't need to add more plastic. But um, what? how have you identified, like, the size of this market for you guys? Like, like what are we talking about? A hundred percent. And that's a great question. Um, as you mentioned, Strawfish has uh, has launched and our pipeline to date has included straws and cutlery with some amazing new products coming later this year and into next. But the problem alone, when you look at the statistics on disposable drinking straws, 
You have over 500 million used a day in the United States. 500 equate, million? Yeah. And if that equates in the US alone to over 100 billion a year, um, and that's just straws. You look at cutlery, you look at cold cups. And you know, early on, we would always get the question why? Why straws? You know, there's other pieces of single-use plastic out there, other disposables that make um, the same size, if not larger, impact than the straw. And I think for all of us, the the real the real story started when the video of the turtle and the straw up its nose came out, and people, you know, for the what seemed to be the first time in a long time, cared about and could visually see the impact that was being made by our on-demand economy and our disposable nature as a as a consumer when it came to taking food to go, when it came to ordering online, um, the impact was really seen for the first time and businesses started setting out to do something about it. You know, Aaron, what I like is that you're not trying to necessarily change the habits of people because good luck. I mean, 100%. I feel like- I mean, I feel like that horse is is out of the gate. It's gone. You're not going to make people go back to the way it was in the 20s and 30s when you reused everything. I mean, it's you're just a, you're meeting people where they're at. That is a uh, you hit it nail the the nail on the head. That is the overall mission of of Strawfish. We understand that changing consumer behavior, especially in the U.S., with over 300 million. Uh, you know, citizens and individuals here dining on a daily basis uh, would be very hard. And, you know, the cost and the infrastructure and the time that would be needed to implement those changes would take lifetimes on over, if if at all. So the mission of our, of our product, our company, and you know, what we're trying to impact is that you can dine as you're used to. You could use disposables that don't have to be industrially washed you don't have to worry about infrastructure to clean collect and sort all you have to do is dine as as you have for you know as long as i've been alive and and hopefully for you know many others knowing that the product is going to return to to the environment without any toxins without any microplastics and close the loop where as you mentioned we're able to clean up our coastlines and the environment and creating the product but cleaning up our environment and our landfills when the product is disposed in a natural setting, not in artificial conditions. All it takes is you disposing of the product in your traditional waste bins and strawfish does the rest. All right. So I do want to get into in a minute the kind of business side of what it's like trying to sell this into food service buyers and distributors and kind of the challenges that you're going to have in there. But before we get to that, I want to understand just maybe a little bit more about the operation. I think people might be sort of interested in like, okay, obviously you're upcycling marine pollution. So like maybe kind of talk us through what that looks like and um, maybe some of the challenges, you know, just with that aspect of it. Definitely. And, you know, even, even going further back than that, Strawfish was founded by three college friends with you know, $200, got our LLC up and running, and set out on our mission with you know, really just elbow grease and a whole lot of passion about reducing the single-use plastic pollution problem that was out there and you know, sharing our story, educating the community, and connecting with businesses and understanding the problem from the business's standpoint and from the consumer's standpoint, allowed us to better refine who we were going to be as a manufacturer and making sure that, as we touched on before, our solution fit into the, the, the problem on the market and we weren't looking to create more problems by disguising a you know, solution you know, within, the, within the changes that were coming. But um, to, to move forward... The, the process for us is in the Baja Peninsula, there's currently mountains of discarded seashells and oyster shells that would otherwise go to our landfills. And they're sitting there with the bacteria on the shells bleaching off into our coastlines. And it's a very unsafe and you know, unclean environment for the local communities as well as the local waterways and wildlife that are 
in those areas. And our team has developed you know, relationships and processes over the greater half of the past decade to, with local governments, local collection sites, oyster farms, uh, shell, shell resources to collect these shells off the coastline and bring them to our facility to process them and clean and treat them so there's no allergens, they're FDA approved. But our whole belief behind this was that instead of industrially harvesting corn or canola or other feedstocks to make a sustainable product, we wanted to show that you could, as you said, upcycle something that is already available to us. It's already regenerative, renewable, and very bountiful and create that secondary economy around an unbelievable creature, but moreover, a, a unbelievable source of raw material. Okay. So what you're saying is that there are other products that are out there, but they're having to be almost, if you will, manufactured or grown to give the solution. You're going in and you're upcycling. What is it? Oyster shells? Correct. Oyster shells, seashells. Um, it's an amalgamation of, of all different uh, you know, shells, including the, the above that are on our coastlines that are being collected at these massive sites with nowhere to go. You know, the, only way, the only place that they would go to is our landfill. They're not being uh, reseeded. They're not being used for spat. They're, they're truthfully the, the last remaining um, you know, hope for them uh, would be going to those final just places to rest out their years. And we want to give them another purpose. And um, there's plenty of them to go around for us to continue our mission and do it at scale without being affected by uh, other industries or crop or climate. Um, it's been very resilient and we continue to see the resilience at, resiliency in it every day. I don't know if anyone would find it interesting, but I, I, I like the manufacturing side of things. Was that difficult to take it from shell into the final format that you need to start creating cutlery and straws? Was that uh, challenging to find the right packer, uh, not pack co-packer, but uh, manufacturing partner? A hundred percent. And um, I think as, as mentioned, our, our partners in Mexico um, have been developing this technology for a greater half of a decade. And it's taken years and years and massive investments into the the R and D behind this technology to bring it from its you know base material and its base feedstock to a technology that can be applied to all different traditional manufacturing forms from extrusion to injection molding, you know, thermoforming, blow film, as we continue to grow, we're we're surprised and excited every day by the versatility of the technology and our ability to work within the existing infrastructure of manufacturing instead of making it more of a headache for partners of ours as we continue to grow. You've got the product now. Now you've got your sales hat on. Oh, you're COO, but everyone sells. We all know everyone sells. We all wear a bunch of hats. We all wear a bunch of hats, right? So walk us through what it's like when you go to talk to food service distributors, so on and so forth. What happens when you show up and you say, hey, we're Strawfish, we've got this great product? There's a lot of skepticism. Um, the industry and the, and the sustainable products movement as a whole over the past two to three years has seen a lot of companies come to market looking to capitalize on new legislation, on the lack of education on a consumer or business standpoint. And there's there's times where the same technology is being used by 50 to 100 plus different companies on the market, where a lot of buyers are being overwhelmed by samples, by what they're being pitched and the, the bending of truth around the claims behind a lot of technologies. And that term has been come to known as greenwashing. It's very prevalent in our industry. And a big, if not the core mission of Strawfish is to provide education and access to solutions that help businesses navigate this greenwashing in order to save time, money, and stress on sourcing alternatives to single-use plastic. Well, we've heard greenwashing used a lot. But you've given it in now in such a way that is showing 
the difficulties of now selling into a market that has been green washed. You're coming in Correct. with an actual real solution and everyone's eyes are just like glazed over. Definitely. And that's, that's been the biggest hurdle for us. Um, being the only, the only company on the market with this technology has, has its benefits and it also has a, a lot of uphill battle to it. Um, we've rolled up our sleeves since day one and we're, we're here for that fight because the overall mission is larger than you know myself. It's larger than my partners or any single company within this industry, but it does take a lot of, of time and effort in order to educate you know, decision makers across all different levels of us walking into your local mom and pop store to spend the time with the owner and answer questions all the way through to regional and national chains that are going through massive you know, RFPs to buy new product and want to dive further into the the global certifications and the manufacturing process and prowess behind creating a new technology and throughout that entire process making sure that we are respectful and understanding of the concerns because we've seen them ourselves and making sure that we lead with integrity and with honesty and transparency around our technology in order to provide the resources that are needed for these teams to make the best decision if it's with us or if it's not with us. You know, if you're selling a food or a product into food service, typically you'll work with a broker. Now, is that a strategy you've used? It's definitely a, a great strategy. And in, in 2023, we've found ourselves um, aligning with more partners, if it's brokers, if it's manufacturer reps, uh, if it's channel partners. We've we come to the the conclusion as we are, you know, we are humble enough to understand across our team that we cannot do it alone and that every single individual across their respectful industry or place in the industry has spent years, you know, in many cases beyond our own building relationships and building levels of trust with key decision makers that when they're equipped with the right product and the right story are able to put strawfish in front of the, the right audience in order to let the product and the technology shine. It's a, it's something that we've continued to grow. And I think every, every business owner, every entrepreneur, solopreneur can understand that what they've been putting their blood, sweat and tears into is their baby. And it's very hard to, to share that. And, and no one is ever going to know about the intricacies of your business or your, your history with that business. And, the ups and the downs, the ups and the flows more than yourself. But we have to be able to empower other individuals to support the Strawfish mission and do that with the the resources and tools that allow them to help us make a larger impact across the board. So 2023 has definitely been a fun one to date um, in bringing these partners online and, and growing the Strawfish mission nationally and internationally. And we're very excited for the remainder of this year and, of course, for the years to come. Is there a softer underbelly somewhere? Is there an, an area where maybe you're getting a little more sympathy, a little more empathy? It seems to work a little better. Definitely. The the armor is pretty strong all around, but um, industries such as your the cruise industry have been very innovative over the past years in order to um, – minimize or mitigate their impact at sea. There have been companies that have been uh, um, caught and fined and for uh, dumping in the oceans or, or having a larger plastics impact than others. And for us, that meant uh, partnering with Royal Caribbean in order to help them reduce all their, all their single-use plastic straws on board and growing to, to support hopefully many more categories out from there. But the cruise industry, as they came back online after the pandemic, um, have started really leaning into sustainability again. And I think there's many different um, different segments of industry that are are starting to do that as well. While we cast a a, a wider net, we we want to be focused on our approach as well, and we understand that there are some core segments that are close to home and and we're passionate about aligning with but also others that are required by legislation or consumers to make that impact and show that they're willing to support this mission that's bigger than all of us 
Aaron, I was kind of debating whether I should ask you this or not, because I know you're a startup to some degree. But if you walked in to McDonald's today and they said, you know what? Yeah. Why don't you go ahead and swap out all of our straws? What would the reaction be internally at Strawfish if you got a yes? We'd be excited. Um, you know, forward facing, we would tell them that we're 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 ready to go. And of course, uh it's it's the image of a of a duck in the water where above above the surface your your cool calm and collected and below your paddling. <laughs> down below it's and, like uh, down below you're kicking and screaming. And one thing that, that differentiates us from other other startups per se is that the the manufacturing prowess infrastructure and our ab- ability to scale the product lines that we currently have available have all been developed over over years we're not we're not a startup that launches a product and that product could run out of supply and then say we're doing a restock and run out of supply and then worry about scaling we've been very conservative in our our growth approach and our innovation pipeline because we understand the responsibility of launching a new product in food service. And from day one, you have to have enough supply in order to meet the demand that you're trying to impact on the market. So in a scenario of, of McDonald's, if if they said tomorrow, swap out all of our straws, we would have to say no. But if they said work with us over these coming months to work through our pilot program in this market and scale to meet the needs of our of our business, we're, we're more than set up, we're more than excited, and we're more than capable to do that. And McDonald's can be billions of straws themselves a year. And I don't think any, any manufacturer, large or small, is producing billions within a 24-hour period. But the, the collaboration that comes across the industry from businesses to manufacturers or suppliers has been opened a lot more as they're looking for a solution that they could grow with for years to come and 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 in a way cross off that category from their sourcing requirements the the due diligence and the levels of audits and certifications and um, testing that goes into a company like McDonald's changing over an item as small as their straw is so complex and so meticulous because of, uh, once again, the responsibility that comes with serving millions of people on a daily basis and making sure that the product quality and the functionality lives up to the brand. And for us, anything that we put out to market has to live up to our quality and our brand. And we only hold that to the highest, highest standard as possible. Well, McDonald's, I know you're listening. So the ball's in your court now. Always available to talk. So as a consumer, what can we do? Is there any levers that we can push or pull? A hundred percent. And I think that's where where Strawfish found its success early on. And I think a lot of companies as well take the grassroots approach in order to educate your local community to get with your, your local businesses. And with that, taking the time to do events in your local community where every, every, individual consumer at this point can most likely agree that they do not like paper straws. Uh, They get soggy, they might taste funky. And with that, um, have at times become deterred from the overall sustainable movement because they don't understand that new solutions are out there that make their, their goal of joining that movement easier than ever. And when, when you come across straw fish as a consumer and you ask, questions to our to our company and you get responses right away what what we could hopefully empower you to do is share that message when you go to a a local restaurant and you see that they're using a a plastic straw or a paper straw tell the tell the wait staff tell the manager that you came across this amazing company that is looking to make an impact and you could check them out and we want to build this community of sustainable warriors across the across the country and across the world that have access to education from toolkits on our website to communication with our team and and hopefully others that want to help the consumer understand what they need to do with the product that they're using in order to make the biggest impact. Well, it sounds like you're building an ambassador program. 
it's something we've been exploring for sure. Um, right now, uh, we've been very fortunate that the community has been very supportive of strawfish and and eager to learn. And the the education is is something that is so important to us and finding that the community is receptive to that and wanting to understand how they can make an impact um, has fueled a, a large part of our mission. And we're always exploring ways to to further that and double down on our efforts. And with that being said, um, we, we hope to be at a point where everyone is an ambassador and everyone, um, if not of strawfish, of the global movement of sustainability away from single-use plastics and towards a, a cleaner and, and and greener future for all. Look, I know the challenge of a startup is you have limited resources and you've got a million ideas and it's just deciding, okay, well, where do we go? Where do we put our money? And I guess investing in an ambassador program is one of those kind of indirect, you know, important, but sort of indirect, right? You probably feel like you want to hit it a little more head on, directly with buyers and operators and distributors and brokers, things like that. But it does sound like that would be a, uh, a really, uh, a campaign that I think a lot of people would get behind, particularly like I know my daughter, for example, she brings those disposable straws with her, but it's one of those, um, no, actually it's not disposable. It's one of those metal ones that kind of retracts. That's and, awesome. Yeah. And she kind of keeps it in a little, a uh, little pouch or something that kind of hangs on her keychain. So wherever she goes, boom, she's got it. And I thought, oh, that's kind of cool. Strawfish may be different than a couple other companies in our market that are, you know, competing at at this point in time because we'll champion any other product that's out there, and we want to champion every any other product that's out there as long as their testing standards and their their methodologies around sourcing the product in their supply chain are honest and true and vetted by third parties in order to support the claims that they are making. And there's not one supplier that's going to run the world of single use plastic disposable alternatives. It's going to take a community, the, the threshold of single use plastics that are used on a daily, monthly and yearly basis is too large for anyone to do alone. And with that being said, I couldn't believe that 500 million straws a day. Yeah. And that's, that's just straws. And imagine all the single use plastics that are out there across food service, across hospitality, across consumer packaging. There's a uh, industrial needs, medical needs. There's, there's so much that is out there that um, it's going to take a village and strawfish is part of that story and part of that impact that's going to be made. But from our end, we just want to make sure that we're equipping all these different individuals from a consumer standpoint to a purchaser with the resources that are needed all in one place to make uh, the right decision. And we call that our toolkit. But overall, it's taking all of the testing standards that are applicable to sustainable products, the disposable methods, the reason why greenwashing is a thing and how to combat it and putting it all in one place that's constantly updated as innovations come to market. So any of the new innovations that are out there, strawfish included, are able to have their flowers and have an audience where, you know, as long as, as you mentioned, as long as they are looking to create a technology that makes it as easy for consumers to join the global movement of sustainability, we're here to support them as well. Give us a call to action as we're, as we wrap up, give the, give the listeners a call to action. Definitely. And you know, first and foremost, we'd love for anyone who's listening to follow Strawfish on Instagram, on our socials at strawfish.co. You know, we post a lot of education, a lot of resources on a daily basis that are, uh, related to the food service industry, the hospitality and cruise industry, and also just new developments in the single use plastic crusade. And with that being said, if anyone ever has questions about any topic within sustainability and single use plastics, my, my direct line is always available. Um, you know, go on our website, reach out to our team. We're always responsive if it's across you know, across any of our outlets. We want to make sure that we're available to answer questions, to flag any concerns, but to be a channel for 
for a conversation. And one of the uh, one of those call to actions is having those conversations within your community. Make sure to talk to your peers about you know, how you're reducing single use plastic consumption and what what companies and what products are helping you do that. And it goes a long way if if a thousand people in in Boca Raton, where I live, go to their local restaurant and say that, you know, we would love for you to transition away from single use plastics. There's a local company or there's a national company that is able to help you do that honestly and affordably. They're, they're, they're more likely to listen and to, to want to explore that solution if the, if they feel as if their consumer voices are being heard. And there's, there's major studies out there that show that consumers are more willing to, to pay more for a product if they know the company is investing or advocating for sustainability and willing to wait a little bit longer or to go through different, um, they're, they're willing to be more flexible to be part of that mission. And as long as they know that the company is looking to support their vision for a, a better future overall. So um, I think those would be two great, great takeaways for everyone to feel empowered to be part of this mission. And it's as simple as, using a different straw in your beverage or you know, making small changes in your everyday life that if we all do, that's you know, hundreds of millions of people, hundreds of millions of pieces of single use plastic and our, our two times the size of Texas garbage patch uh, will slowly start shrinking and our landfills will be less at capacity and our global food supply chains will be um, less vulnerable to demand or in, you know, increase capacities and will be in a, you know, hopefully a, a more prosperous place for all. Well, I think we're going to have a follow-up conversation at, about this at some point, whether it's a live stream or another podcast. I've got a lot of food service professionals and executives I've talked to. I've got other people we've talked to and sustainability and work they're doing in plastic and upcycling. So I think we're going to have some more conversations around this. We'll be sure to include you. Aaron, great to do a little, little more of a deep dive with you here. Get it out there for everyone to hear. I know you and I have talked before, so it's great that everyone now can kind of hear what I've been hearing from you. And I love your call to action. I love what you guys are doing. I really can't wait to hear what you have next in the uh, innovation pipeline because this is way, way overdue. It's uh, it's super exciting, and thank you for the the words and support as well. It's been a journey. Um, we've learned so much across this journey of entrepreneurship, and we uh, we don't see ourselves stopping anytime soon. So, as you said, there's a lot of a lot of new products that are going to make even bigger impacts in food service and in you know, single use plastic pollution in the fight against it. That um, we're 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 excited for what the future holds doing it with partners that understand that change is needed and are are open and looking for that change so as once again thank you so much for having us on i'm excited for us to have further conversations and as always if if you have any other questions if the audience does as well um, please provide my information directly to them oh you bet it'll all be in the show notes and that's why we're starting to do live streams you know four to six weeks after the podcast releases so we can do some follow-up on that. Aaron, so good to talk to you again today. Thank you so much for being on Winning at Work. Likewise.